Tim might be interested in watching how we do this video capture and stuff. Y'all, did little birdie tell you all that? I don't know if it's like that. Oh, okay. Well, if y'all see Tim anytime, they ask him, was there any truth to that little birdie thing? Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, it may be raining out. Well, it's raining inside, too. It's raining on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome. Good to see you. Let's get started. Hey there, brother. Bring my little baby on in here. Hey, Owen. <laughs> he is a happy cow. He's contented. He's a, he must be a, what was that? A carnation kid. Because <laughs> he's contented. <laughs> And legs go all the way to the ground. Don't you? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, these people who've come to hear uh, your word uh, spoken and taught and preached. And Father, just uh, despite the odds, despite the weather, despite the feelings, despite the busy, hectic schedule, they put all aside and came to worship you. Praise God. Praise God. May we have more. Lord, I pray for this class that we may learn today, something that would, uh, would, that would be of assistance to us in serving you. I pray that uh, those that are on the fence this morning about even coming would uh, be uh, prompted by your Holy Spirit, and those that, that do come may be enlightened. I pray this, uh, the, uh, that I might be able to say uh, exactly the words you would have me to say. And the results we'll leave up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I should have asked about prayer requests. Anybody got any, any prayer requests that I don't already know about? You can add knees all over. <laughs> I, I just put I put a blanket coverage on those knees. Last night or yesterday, sometimes uh, Sharon called. I, I remember I didn't. Uh, Loretta Cole's daughter is on the ventilator in ICU. Yeah. But what was the other one? Was it that I got the feeling it was her daughter's daughter, her oh, granddaughter, daughter. also on in ICU? Is that right? Is that what y'all got out of that? Yeah. Wow. Well, it's not in the bulletin. I already prepared I mean, it. So. Oh, well, too, after I heard that, but I... Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, that might be good this afternoon. It's just touch base with her and, and yeah, tell her. I do have her. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> That's what I got out of it. Yeah, I, I, did, I couldn't quite uh, catch exactly what she said, but she said L Lizzie. Lizzie, do they call Loretta, Lizzie, or the daughter, Lizzie, Melissa, Lizzie, Lizzie, Lisa, Lisa, Lizzie, something like that. I think that's what she said. But anyway, we'll find out. We'll pray for the whole family. How about that? The, the cold family. Others? All right. Um, we'll add that today. Announcements? Don't have any myself. How about y'all? Then let's get started. We are in uh, chapter five today. In the book of Revelation, chapter five, we're beginning chapter five. Um, chapter four, the past two weeks we've been on, we talked about the end times, of course, the throne room, the, the beasts that were in the throne room, we call the white raiment that the elders wore, the gold crowns that they had. We're going to find out today what they do with, the, with those gold crowns. But the jewels that he uh, resembled, he was so brilliant and beautiful. And the bright light, the bright light, uh, we talked about that in the throne room, just brighter than, than an LED. <laughs> and it pictured the glory of God. Last week, we talked about the holiness of God, how holy God is. Remember those cherubims and seraphims singing, holy, holy, holy. That song, that's where it came from right there. Melissa and I would ever watch him do it, too. It was, it was a while back. The four beasts resembled uh, four different characters, creatures that God had made, the lion, the calf, the man, and the eagle. And the point was that God created it all. And so he should have the glory for all of it. That was the point. And I am sure if we haven't yet, we will one day give him glory for all of that. We'll recognize and realize how awesome. If we don't understand how God is, we, we'll know it then. And the four beasts never slept. Remember, they were like the Hard Rock Hotel. They stayed up singing all night long. <laughs> and I didn't care for that at that time, but I'm sure I'll enjoy this a whole lot more, singing praise to the Lord. Today, chapter five. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read the first seven verses of chapter five, if I can find it. Where's Revelation come in the Bible? That's, is that near the end? <laughs> Somebody says, it's over there. Just keep looking. Uh, chapter five. Here we go. All right, and we'll read the first uh, seven verses. 
Uh, Father, we stop and pause to pray once more for Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. I pray, Father, that you would bless the uh, and protect the Christians there. And uh, even those that aren't Christians, for that matter, that, uh, that would have the opportunity to hear the gospel. I pray a hedge of protection around them. I know, Lord, they have spirit and courage, and we thank you for that. But, Lord, give them that supernatural extra ability to, uh, to defend themselves for the sake of righteousness to come, if nothing else. Father, I pray you'd put your hand against the enemy, that you would deter him in every way possible uh, to make sure that the, uh, the godly, and we, and we have some related to this church, in that area might uh, might be uh, healed and saved and, and kept whole in Jesus name. Amen. First seven verses of uh, chapter five, if I can get my glasses on, we'll commence. Paul said, I mean, uh, John says uh, 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 through the revelation, after this, I looked and behold, a, no, that ain't what chapter five says, no. is it? That's chapter four. <laughs> let's get, let's go on down the road here a minute. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Uh, And I saw a strong angel. Now that meant loud. (laughs) Strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to even look thereon. And John says, and I wept much. You know why he wept? He had congregants in there at the time. Some of the people that he led to the Lord in those churches were there. Nobody could open the book. And he thought, wow, what does that mean? Nobody there can, can open the book. No man was found worthy to open to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, weep not, weep not, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed, hath already happened, <laughs> to open the book. And to, he had to open the book, didn't he? Uh, to get the words in there, didn't he? He had already opened the book to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the middle of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. It appeared to be slain, given the impression. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Well, praise God. Lord, just bless this, this teaching time in Jesus' name. All right. By the way, that word book there uh, in the Greek, w- we would call it a scroll. That's what it was. it was. They didn't have published books back then, of course. And so it was really a scroll. That's a word for scroll today. And the seals, you could imagine the, the, the scroll was all sealed up so that it couldn't be opened. And, you know, if you laid a, a roll of something down, you know what's going to happen. Half of it's going to roll out to the other room over there. Well, there were seals on there to keep it closed. Seven of them. We'll understand that by and by. Uh, One other thing that's important to me, I hope it is to you, the Greek word for all of that, that's the English word, scroll or book. Okay, that's our transliteration of it. The Greek word there uh, meant it was biblion. B-I-B-L-I-O-N. Does that sound familiar? (laughs) That was the Greek word for the book that he opened. The book was in God's which hand? right hand what does that designate to you always for you lefties uh, i know you don't like it but what <laughs> what does it mean power strength most people are right-handed that's where their power is and so it was in his right hand that symbolized god's power and authority to execute the book decrees that book was full of decrees and somebody's gonna have to bring them to put to have to pass and so he it was in his right hand signifying i'm in charge i'm i'm in authority the scroll had writing on it. It not only had it on the front, but it, imagine that, even on the back of the roll, it had it because there was so much to say. So it had writing front and back, it said, uh, symbolizing completeness. Revelation is so full of symbols, and we're now just getting into the symbolization. There's just symbols everywhere. The, uh, the uh, front and back symbolize completeness or comprehensiveness. Nothing goes unlooked and unnoticed and undealt with according to the Heavenly Father. The scroll was sealed with seven seals and a seal 
was was wax that had uh, been melted and then um, somebody had put an image in it of some sort, L attorneys and legals and judges and so, and so forth, put an insignia in it to indicate that the document in there, inside was legal uh, and th when they sealed it with that wax. But at any rate, it had an image in it and then it hardened with that image. So anybody could look at that, <clears throat> that uh, wax and tell uh, whether it was legal or not <clears throat> and, and official. <clears throat> um, in Roman law, um, the document was not just sealed once or twice or three times, but it was sealed seven times. If it were, boy, you better believe it. If somebody presented you with a, with a document that had seven seals on it, you better stand up and pay attention because it was important. It had been, it had been passed through everybody's hands in, in Roman law, uh, and it proved its legality. <clears throat> the uh, seal certainly secured the document, and, uh, which obviously meant that it was genuine. It was authority. It was author authoritative. Now, verse 2 and 3, <clears throat> John said he saw a strong angel means a, that word we would say means able to proclaim with a loud booming voice you've heard uh, you, you ever read those stories about the old um, uh book was it bush harbor is that what they call them preachers what what kind of harbor was it uh, the old preachers that preached in the some kind out in the woods in other words they they get a big clearing and they brush harbor that's it brush harbor preachers and there were thousands of people out across the countryside. And this old boy didn't have a microphone. <laughs> and he'd preach. Brush Harbor preached. Boy, they must have had some lungs, you reckon? They had an able voice. They had a strong voice. They were able to proclaim in a loud, booming voice. And uh, that, that, angel with that, loud, that, uh, that uh, angel with that loud, strong voice says, who is worthy? And I imagine every, imagine how many saints. There were 12 tribes there, but that represented saints from every tribe. And then the New Testament, uh, from uh, all over the New Testament, the then known world that was saved. Uh, well, uh, it'd be more than just uh, Europe. Uh, by the time this took place, hopefully it'd be the whole world. <laughs> this is a vision of what is to come. And the Bible says that he'll preach the gospel and we'll preach the gospel until it's been delivered to every corner of the world. So everybody in the world will have had the opportunity to accept the gospel. And so that's what's in heaven here is all lots of people and somebody is talking. Who is worthy to loose the seals? The question had the meaning of who had the authority to carry out the degrees, uh, decrees written in that book is what it really meant. When he said who's able to, uh, to, uh, to loose it, he meant who can, who can dictate, who can execute, who has the authority to carry out the commands and words and decrees written in that book in the front of the back. Who rules creation? would be another way of putting it. Who rules? Who rules creation? Well, obviously nobody could answer yes. Um, John got over his crimes uh, pretty quickly. The angel wanted John um, and us now uh, to realize something. The Roman emperor, and remember when this was written, Rome was, was uh, a real threat. Rome was massive, was growing like crazy, and a lot of people worshiped the emperor of Rome. That was a problem in the churches. When this book was written, way before end times, when John uh, when John wrote it, that was the situation, and so people uh, bowed down and worshipped the emperor out of fear mostly, but that broke John's heart, and they also worshipped false gods. We read that broke John's uh, 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 heart. So I, I imagine when he heard the angel say, "Who is eligible to open this book?" John thought about that and he said, "Oh my, you mean to say all these people worship the emperor and he ain't here?" You, may, you mean all these people worship the false? Couldn't be, couldn't be, Lord. The worshiping false God. No, it couldn't be, but, but that's what he must have thought. The military doesn't control the future. The emperor didn't control the future. Not the wealthy, not the terrorists, not Iran, Iraq, and all those guys won't control the future. None of those will. God will control the future. He controls it now, but he'll be in charge in heaven. No one else had the power. No one else had the ultimate destiny. No angel even in heaven or earth. Now, they said that the four beasts were still there, and they had the six wings and the six eyes, and uh, uh, that, that was last week, though. I don't need to say that. I already said that. I said that last week. Y'all just hold on. <laughs> I'm skipping around here, because last week I had to skip around. I forgot what I said. Jesus alone will judge. Verse 4, John had tremendous grief. He wept, because no one in heaven was worthy. Um, he was a preacher, after all. 
he was a preacher, and so he was he was thinking about his congregants that happened to be in the in the crowd. I'm sure. Why else did God allow John to have such a tremendous grief? Do you think? Was there any? Can you think of any other reason why John would begin crying when the question was asked, "Who is worthy?" He realized finally who was worthy, and then what happened? He continued to cry. I don't know about you, and maybe you're res, res, you're not you you're macho and whatever, and and this is not you. But I'll be honest with you. There's times when I weep. I, I maybe not tremendously, but I weep over something that you know it's not sad. It's happy, <laughs> and I weep. I watch uh, I watch gospel music a lot, and uh, there's some preachers in, in their music that I don't care so much for the preacher, but boy, I love their music. And I listen to uh, to uh, Swaggart all the time, his singers and players. And listen, man, sometimes I just, I can, I can just listen to some of the songs they sing and begin to tear up. Or oh, it's joy, it's joy. And I think maybe that's what John had too. He fully realized at that point who was worthy. The one that he was had served all these years was the worthy one and he teared up. He had a God moment. God wanted John and everybody there to realize that he alone is able to control. He alone has the power and he alone will be our judge. We can't judge and nobody else there can. He and, and Jesus Christ, his son, God's son, will be the judge. Um, now, an elder answered the question, said, hey, John, ease up, boy, it's going to be all right. And he comforted John. He said, it's already been, we already got that solved. And in verse five, he pointed out to John who it was, who, who was eligible to carry it out. The elder said, it's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. What does that mean? Does that mean anything to you? Uh, you remember in, uh, well, in, in the Bible, the 12 sons of Jacob each had tribes, the 12 tribes uh, uh, of Jacob. And uh, Judah was, called, was one of them. Judah was called a young lion in the Bible. And so when they said the lion of the root of, uh, of David, of the tribe of Judah. That root of David means something too, doesn't it? Remember in the book of Ruth when we preached last year about uh, Naomi and Ruth came back home and Ruth married Boaz and they began to have children. And you remember the first child was named Obed, I believe it was. The first one was Obed. Obed gave birth to Jesse and then down the line it went. Okay. Guess where it ended? It didn't end up there, but guess who was in that lineup down the road a ways? David. Remember the, the, the shepherd boy? He was in that line. He was a descendant uh, of, the, of the lineage. And then who else was in? Sandy's already answered it. Who else was in that lineage later on? Joseph. Yeah, Joseph, the earthly father of, of Jesus. And so that's what it meant by of the root of David. Man, what a prophecy that was. Oh, you know, seven, it was eight, not 800 years before that had happened uh, when that was prophesied. And uh, this was 500 years, 600 years, something like that. And so isn't that amazing, the prophecy that goes on? Genesis 49, if you want to read all about that. Uh, it was the root of David and the, and the, uh, one of the, and the, the lion of the tribe, of, the, young, of the lion of the tribe of, uh, of uh, Judah. Verse six, John looked and, uh, and saw a, we would say a slain lamb is how he pictured it. It was Jesus, but he, but he in essence, uh, saw a slain lamb. What does that mean? Jesus was the lamb in the New Testament. He took the place of all those young cows and young beef cattle and, and beautiful uh, calves that were sacrificed. He was the sacrifice on the cross for us. He was the slain lamb for us. And so, therefore, he was worthy to open the scroll. He was, uh, he was not only uh, God's son out of the, uh, and of the lineage, lineage of, of, uh, of David, but he of the root of David, but he was worthy to open the scroll because of his death on the cross. His death on the cross. He was a sacrificial lamb. Took away the sins of the world. Um, the, 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 uh, the text here says, had been slain. That's Greek perfect passive. Uh, meaning it, uh, it's, had in the, it's, it's done in the past, but it still carries over, it has weight today. Perfect passive is what that meant. And that's exactly what happened. It had been, in, it, uh, Jesus died in the past, but doesn't it have weight today? Sure does, big time. Perfect passive. Already been done but was and was permanent. Didn't need to do it again, but it still had clout today. That's what that meant. 
The word indicated victory or triumph, and certainly that was. Satan was defeated, wasn't he? Once and for all, and knows it. And so that victory took place there because of that slain sacrifice. That's implied in that word slain. And of course, now he's arisen alive again and triumphantly he stood, the Bible says. The lamb wasn't seated, was he? The lamb was standing in that verse to indicate the victor, to indicate when he died on the cross. He, that was the moment of victory, not of defeat. He stood like a champion. He didn't sit like a defeated person. Uh, then we go, that was verse six, I believe. Let's just see if we've got some more time. Yeah, we got another couple of minutes, I believe. Well, John saw seven horns on that slain lamb. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? That's more than a Rolls Royce. Seven perfect, uh, seven's the what? Perfect number? Is that not right? Yeah. Seven is, so there we go. Uh, that, that lamb was perfect. He was perfect. He was Jesus, full of righteousness. And he had the authority and power, perfect power. Eyes, he had seven eyes. Uh, eyes represented the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is and was the Holy Spirit, but he was, the seven eyes proved it, in other words, to the people around. And it also remember back in the first chapter, this, there were seven of them because there were seven spirits to indicate the seven churches. Now, there's only one Holy Spirit, but what uh, the author meant was each church had the Holy Spirit. There. The, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent also, just like God is. And so uh, there were seven churches. So there was said the number seven was, was shown there because there were seven churches. The Holy Spirit was prominent and available in all seven of them. Uh, verse seven, the lamb, approached, uh, the, the lamb of God approached the throne and took the book from the father's right hand, from his, from his right hand. John 5, 22 says, for the father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. So it was important that Jesus take that book. Okay, Jesus had to get that book in his hand because he was going to stand up at the, at the judgment seat and at the, and at the uh, uh, great white throne judgment. He was going to be the judge, so he had to have the book in his hand. Jesus then, uh, the, the authority was transferred, if you will, uh, so that he could execute the decrees in the book. Now, how do we apply that today? I can't get over... The, the picture of the elders and John crying. To me, that, that is so symbolic of worship, isn't it? Worship singers either do it for glory or they do it for, um, the, uh, for the effect of worship. The true effect of worship has emotions in it. I don't care what you say. And what if you had been seated there that day in the throne room when those seraphims and cherubims began to sing, holy, holy, and the lamb was standing there. And what did the elders do? They didn't say anything. They couldn't say anything. They were choked up. They took their golden crowns off and gave them to the lamb, laid them at the throne. Now, is that worship? Can't get any better than that. That was the most impressive, important, richest, best thing they had was that golden crown. It would be for, for us, too. And so they gave their best to the worthy lamb. That's how much they were worshiping him. And that singing just prompted that worship. I love, you know, I love the singing before I preach because it, it softens the heart. I don't care what you say. It softens the heart. It, it, it allows the Holy Spirit to dig a little deeper, I think, in most cases. And sometimes opens a door that was closed. You just don't ever, you never know. So it smacks of, of worship, I think. Not, not just in heaven one day, but probably speaks to us today about worship here. You know, when, when these guys sing, uh, it just, it's laser focus. It's not, it, you know, sometimes what they do, you know, me, I'm kind of, I like rhythm and all that. And, and there's some of that too. But oftentimes it just, it just, it just touches your heart like nothing else could. You could read it and it wouldn't do it, but hearing it sung touches your heart. And it, so that should be taking place here on earth as well as in heaven because of who he is, God's son. And, uh, and, and because of the sacrifice, that's another reason why we worship because of what he did. Who else do you know that would die for you, for your sins, not for your, uh, you know, not a relative now that's dying because, you know, to protect you, but because you've done something wrong, he's going to go and die for you. Yeah. The, Jesus, that's why we, we worship him. That's what it smacks to me of. That whole picture is worship. What do y'all get out of that? Same thing. Holy, holiness. Um, the, the caption for this chapter was 
uh, or the previous chapter, uh, the, the, the commentaries say that it was a picture of glory of holy, and holiness. And if anything, this chapter just continued that picture and threw in worthiness and worship in there with it. So worthy to worship. Questions or comments? Anybody? Anybody? How did that picture move you when you read it? Same way? Different way? No picture? No movement at all? What do you think? Is this helping at all? Are these symbols and the teaching of it helping to understand the book of Revelation any better? And we ain't even got the good parts yet. <laughs> we just we just on the front porch, y'all. <laughs> We're gonna come in and stay and eat in a little while. <laughs> Get the table ready. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I do too. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your blessings. Oh, thank you for your power and your spirit. But thank you for your gentleness, Lord, that you just lead us where you want us to go. And uh, we respond. And when we do, it blesses your heart. And we, we're grateful for that. Thank you for the word. May we break it open in the next, uh, in, the sermon, in the worship hour as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, folk. Amen, he said. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Jump it up and down. I'm going to jump pews here before, before the day's over. <laughs>